Hey everybody, Captain Bill here, and I have a question for all you sailors out there. Are your chain plates cracked? No? Are you sure? So chain plates are a key connection that transfer the rigging loads to the hull from the mast. Unlike almost all the rest of the rigging parts, they're not routinely replaced. When they fail, the loss of the entire rig is frequently the result. Almost always made of stainless steel, under some conditions they can be subject to fatigue cracking failures. Think of taking a paper clip, bending it back and forth, over and over. There comes a point where the metal just fails. That's metal fatigue in action. There's good news here, however. Chain plate failures are never sudden. They occur slowly. This gives us the opportunity to catch the failure, but only if we know how to look for it. Here are photos from a boat that had a chain plate fail while on passage in the North Atlantic. Fortunately, through a combination of luck and good seamanship, the rig did not come down, but it was still a difficult, traumatic, and expensive event for all involved. Now, this started as a tiny pair of fatigue cracks from bending stress. You can see the dull, rust-marked areas on each side that developed as the crack very slowly grew inward from both sides of this part. Eventually, there was just not enough metal left to support the loads, and the bright silver surfaces show where the final failure occurred, just tearing the metal apart, seemingly suddenly in mild conditions. Professional rig inspectors missed this, but in this video, we'll show you how to find these tiny cracks before they destroy your boat. But before we get to the fancier technology around this, there's a lot to be seen by looking. Not just looking, but looking very carefully and closely. Very closely. On our boat, Karen cleans the metal parts near the deck with a toothbrush. Literally, a toothbrush. On a 53-foot boat. <laughs> this forces her to look very closely at everything. Any trace of unexpected rust or unusual appearance is flagged so it can be inspected more critically. My first tool for a detailed inspection is an inexpensive jeweler's loop. With high magnification, it's still easy to use, and this has been my primary tool for inspecting anything that looks suspicious. But a simple visual inspection can only go so far. Sometimes we need more sophisticated tools. The best available to the average sailboat owner is a dye penetrant test. This has been a go-to tool for industry in critical applications for a long time, yet it's a tool that with just a little bit of care, the average DIY sailor can use effectively. In this video, we're going to use a dye penetrant kit to test two parts from our boat. An exhaust elbow with a suspected casting flaw, and the four-stay chain plate on our boat that's very similar to the failed one we just looked at. Now this is the four-stay chain plate on Harmony as it normally sits. Under normal sailing loads, this part is subject to bending stresses that potentially could lead to fatigue cracks. Here's a photo of the exhaust elbow as it sits on the engine. Overall, it looks in great condition, but there's one place where it looks like there might be a very small leak through a pinhole in the casting. I'm going to walk through the detailed testing procedure for the exhaust elbow and show how that translates to being used on a piece like the chain plate. So let's talk about exhaust elbows first. We've got uh, two exhaust elbows to look at here. Uh, this one is off our main drive engine, the Volvo TMD22. Uh, this one is off our whisper power generator. This one uh, has a reputation of having a really long life, but it has, and it's really going to be hard to see, there's this one little dribble of rust on the outside of it, which looks like it's coming from a little tiny pinhole in uh, the casting. Uh, we're going to look at that and see if that's really what's happening uh, and show you how you can do that yourself. Uh, to do that, the first thing we're going to have to do is clean this up so it's all shiny clean metal. We can look at the inside. Now this is really very nice inside. It's got a very thin layer of soot, which of course it's going to have, but no buildup, no heavy chunky stuff. Uh, this is in really good shape for having been used for as much as it has. Uh, but how do you clean this? Yeah. 
well, there's something that is really good for cleaning these parts. It is oven cleaner. Uh, you're getting burnt gunk stuff, oily stuff off of metal parts, uh, and it works really well for that. Uh, never use this on anything made of aluminum. <laughs> uh, it will dissolve aluminum. But on stainless steel and other metals that your engine's going to be made of, uh, this stuff is just great. Let's take a look at this other one. Uh, this is uh, the original exhaust elbow that came on our uh, Whisper Power generator. Unfortunately, on the back side, things are a lot more unfortunate. Uh, here we have a significant hole. Uh, that's allowing salt water and rust to dribble out. Take this, I'm going to clean it up with the oven cleaner, and we're going to come back and look at how to inspect it so that we know that it's safe to use uh, or that it needs to be replaced. Okay, now let's bring the chain plate into the picture. Here's Harmony's chain plate as it looked when it was first removed from the boat. It's caked with salt and dirt and old sealant. The rust you see on the lower end bled off the attaching bolt, and it's just surface discoloration. This part, however, did clean up very nicely, shiny and smooth, a few nicks and scratches, but overall it looks great with no visible evidence of cracks or concerning issues. On the other hand, the whole purpose of this test is to look for things that cannot be easily seen by eye. So for the next steps, follow along. So now we want to look and see in this area here where we had that little bit of rust dribble, uh, is it going to show us that there's a hole there when we do a dye penetrant kit? So we're going to start with the cleaner. Um, this probably isn't necessary since we just cleaned it with caustic but it will make sure that there is no grease or anything else on there that will interfere with the test. So spray it, wipe it, make sure that all the dirt and gunk and anything else that's on there is gone. Now we're going to spray it with the actual penetrating dye. And the idea here is we cover the surface with the dye. The dye is very thin and it tends to creep down into cracks and holes and other imperfections in the material. And then we wipe off the surface so we don't see any of the dye anymore. Then we spray it with the developer, which actually sucks the dye back out of the cracks and the imperfections so we can see where they are. So this is basically just a bright red dye that we're going to put on the area that we're concerned with. And this particular dye penetrant uh, suggests that you leave it sit for five minutes at least to uh, penetrate into cracks and the other imperfections. So we're going to do that and then we'll come back and do the next step. And here's the chain plate after it's cleaning and is coated with an even layer of penetrating dye that will soak for five minutes. So now on to the next step. Our five minutes are up and our first step now is to just take the rag and wipe as much of the dye off as I can. I don't want to leave any red spots. Maybe a little bit of pink is okay, but I basically want to get as much off as I can. Then one last time, we're going to take a little cleaner and just spray it on the rag and wipe with that. We don't want to spray the cleaner on the part at this point because we'll remove all of the dye. And where we want to end up is with the dye still stuck in the cracks and so forth, uh, not, uh, not everywhere, but only where uh, we're looking for it. And here's the excess dye being removed from the chain plate. Now, let's go back to the elbow. Now, the magic part is the developer. 
This is one that needs to be agitated because it does contain some solids in a solvent. Okay. Now we're just going to put a light coating of this over the area that we're inspecting. And we're going to let it dry. Now this needs to sit for minimum dwell time is 10 minutes. So we're going to let this sit for 10 minutes. Although if I take a good look at this, we can look at the, I mean, we can see this already, this red spot growing out of where we expect to find a problem. Yeah. So we're going to let that sit for a little bit and see what we see. Now, after our 10 minutes are up, this is the result a clear indication of an issue right where we expect to see it. The red spot on the field of white shows us where the developer is sucking the dye out of a pit in the casting. Now let's have a look at the chain plate after the developer step. In this case, it's pure white, not a trace of an issue. So this part is good to be reinstalled and put back into normal service without a worry. One thing about this test that's important to understand. It has been described as finding 10 out of every five serious problems. All it is showing you is the location of a pit or crevice in the metal. It's pointing you to a potential problem, and you need to do more investigating to see if the issue is really one of concern. In some cases, like a chain plate, if a crack was indicated, the amount of time and effort to decide if it was a real problem or not is probably just not worth it. They're simple to fabricate, just have a new one made. In the case of our exhaust elbow, we ground and polished that area of the casting and found the pit was actually quite shallow and not a source of concern. On an ocean-going boat, it's a bad idea to run things until they break. Being proactive in looking for problems can literally save your life. So take good care of your boat so it can take good care of you. Have fun and be safe.